Welcome to uh, the second lecture of module 4 of this course called Game Theory and Economics. So, we have been discussing mixed strategy in Nash equilibrium. Uh, so, we have not defined yet what is actually a mixed strategy in Nash equilibrium, but I have been trying to motivate the problem. So, here is a case where uh, the players can uh, randomize between their actions it is possible that they do not take their actions for certainty. They may randomize over their action, they may take certain action with some probability and some other action with some probability. We want to find out if uh, players are allowed to randomize, then what kind of equilibrium we can get from such situation. Uh, so far we have seen that uh, if the outcomes are uncertain, uh, then the payoff of the players uh, can be represented by what is known and what is known as the the expected utility theory that is if there are three possible outcomes each happening with uh, some probability p1, p2, p3, then the payoff to the person, concerned person who is, uh, uh, who is observing these three outcomes and who can uh, get a utility out of each of these three outcomes will be given by let us call it u it is given by p1 So, this is cap this capital U is what is the total payoff that the player is getting, the person is getting from these three outcomes. Each of them is occurring with some probability P1, P2, P3 and uh, this <coughs> total utility can be represented as the expected uh, value of these individual utilities. And this individual utilities are represented by small u. So, this is small u and this is capital U. The small u's are defined over certain outcomes. Uh, if A happens, small a happens, then this small u of A represents the uh, payoff to the player from this certain outcome. <coughs> but we know that B and C can also happen. So, the total payoff to the person is the expected value of this individual payoffs and that we are representing by capital U and we say that we can do so only if this preference of the player uh, is follows the uh, von Neumann Morgenstern property. And this small u is known as the Bernoulli payoff function or the Bernoulli utility function. Now, so this expected utility theory gives us a clue as to how people evaluate uh, their payoffs when the outcomes are not certain and there are more than two or three outcomes. Uh, but by knowing uh, that I can do this, I can represent the payoff of a player from this uncertain situation. By the way, this is called a lottery. From a lottery, by this formula, I can know, uh, I can not be certain whether a player will prefer one lottery over another lottery. For example, uh, the example that I gave in the last lecture, if suppose x is preferred to y and y is preferred to z and suppose there are two lotteries these two lotteries are there suppose this is L1 and this is L2. Uh, then uh, I do not know whether the player is going to prefer this over this 
or this over this. It can happen that a player has uh, U B this is possible this tells me that this player is preferring L2 over L1 or it may very well happen that uh, this goes the other way in which case L1 is preferred to L2. In this case uh, the player is uh, having uh, this lottery over this lottery in this first lottery L1 uh, uh, the first outcome sorry this is x and y and z. In this first uh, L1 what is happening is that x is happening with probability half, uh, y is happening with probability 0 and z is happening with probability half. So, here both x and z can happen with some probability and the, a player can like that lottery over a lottery where only y happens with certainty. Uh, particularly a player will like L1 over L2 if uh, a player likes to take risk because there is a possibility that z will happen in which case his, uh, his, uh, he does not have any much utility, he does not get much utility out of the situation. But there is again a pro possibility that x happens and that induces this person who likes to take risk to prefer L1 over L2. L2 you know uh, only y is happening with certainty which is better than z but which is worse than x. So, uh, to know whether a person will take L1 over L2 or a person will take L2 over L1, uh, it depends on the individual characteristics of this small u functions. And uh, what kind of shape of u will in induce risk taking behavior and what kind of shape of u will induce uh, not risk taking behavior can be shown in the following example. Suppose x is 100, y is 50 and z is 0. Now <coughs> let us consider the following lottery half, 0 half, 0 1 0. So, these are the, the along this axis we are representing the amount you can think uh, this 100 as the amount of money that the people are getting. So, this is rupees and this is utility that the, the player is getting from uh, having those amount of money. So, suppose 0 is here this is z and this is suppose x and I know that in general if a person's is getting more money, he is getting more utility, which is why x is preferred to y. Now, the question is where, how I can, I know that the utility function passes through a, this point and this point, but what kind of shape does it take? Now, suppose it, ha if it so happens that uh, uy is greater than half of ux plus half of u z which means that the person is the person concerned is liking the certain outcome this is being liked. Uh, where is y? y is somewhere in between. So, I can write this as half x plus half z because y is uh, 50 uh, half of 100 plus half of 0. Now, if this is true then at this point corresponding to this point uh, if I draw a straight line 
what is the point in the middle of the straight line? This middle of the straight line point if I call it suppose uh, this is y, suppose this is k, then k is nothing but half of ux plus half of uz. From this information what I know is that u of y is somewhere above this line, above this point. So, the curve, the u curve must pass through this point, this point and this point. Now, I can go on uh, changing the value of this half and this half in the sense that I can take this to be p and this to be 1 minus p. So, if the person always likes this certain outcome, then I have this uh, equation that p of x plus 1 minus p of z is greater than this I know here p was half, but p could take any value and for each value of p the value on the curve is above then the value on the chord. So, the curve will have a shape like this. which means a person who likes to take the uh, certain outcome which is uh, in between uh, in terms of preference uh, is a person who can be called as a risk averse person. A risk averse person who does not like to take risk, who likes to take the middle path uh, will have a utility function. which is of this shape and this shape is called concave. So, this is a fundamental uh, deduction that we have, uh, we have uh, reached from this theory of expected utility that if a person is a risk averse person, his utility function is going to be a concave function. And the more risk averse a person is, it may happen that the degree of risk aversion changes. If the risk aversion changes more, uh, then the curve becomes more and more concave. By the same logic, we can also say the following that u of, if it so happens that If this is true for all p in the range 0 to 1, uh, not all excepting 0 and 1, uh, then what is happening at the, is that a person is taking the risk. He is thinking that, so uh, here is rupees here is utility. So, suppose this is ux, uz and this is ux. This is the point on the chord. Here the point on the chord uh, is this one is higher than the point on the curve which is here for example and the function is of this shape a convex function so this is a, this is a person who is a risk taker or a risk lover a function like this upward rising and convex. And uh, 
what about the person who is indifferent between uh, whether he takes risk or not take risks. So, uh, it may happen that it is an equality. If it is an equality then the function is neither convex nor concave, it is just an upward rising function. So, this is the case of risk taker and this is the case of risk neutral who is indifferent between taking risk and not taking risk. So, this is a, a way to uh, characterize the risk taking behavior of different people that we just look at the utility functions of people and from the shape of the utility functions we can deduce whether the person uh, likes to take risk or does not like to take risk. Uh, but mind you this is crucially based on our theory of expected utility uh, and expected utility theory is, a, is just a conjecture. Uh, in laboratory experiments, it is seen that people uh, may not follow the conjecture of expected utility theory. Now, <coughs> uh, so in real life, it can be asked whether people are risk takers or risk lovers, uh, risk uh, averse people. Uh, it varies from person to person and from situation to situation also. For example, uh, a certain person may like to take, take uh, might, might like to buy a lottery ticket. Now, if a person is buying a lottery ticket, what he is doing is that he is entering into a risky situation. If he had not bought a lottery ticket, there is no risk, uh, he is not uh, going into any uncertainty. But if he is buying a lottery ticket, he is entering into uncertainty. Let me tell you why. Uh, so, if he does not buy any lottery ticket, what is his payoff? Suppose if he does not buy, his payoff is 0, he is not making any loss nor making any gain. He is just retaining what he had before. So, there is no uh, addition or subtraction from his wealth. If he buys a lottery ticket, then there are two possibilities. One is he is getting the lottery. Now, if he is getting the lottery, then what is his payoff? Suppose the lottery is worth 1 lakh rupees, uh, but from this I have to subtract the price of the lottery ticket which is suppose 10 rupees. So, this is the money that he gets if he wins the lottery. If he does not win the lottery, <coughs> his, what is the amount that he is left with? He is left with minus 10 rupees, Did, I mean I am just talking about the addition or subtraction to his wealth. So, the addition to his wealth is just minus 10 rupees if he does not get the lottery and if he gets the lottery it is 1 lakh minus 10. So, this is a situation like we have discussed before, uh, 0 is like B, it is happening with certainty, you are not buying a lottery ticket and what you are getting is for certain, you are not uh, entering into any risk. But if you are buying a lottery ticket, then there are two possibilities. Either you get the money, then you make a lot of money, uh, this much amount of money. And if you do not get the lottery, then you make a loss, which is of minus 10 rupees. So, some people will buy this lottery ticket. So, they will uh, prefer this over this. Or some people will not buy a lottery ticket, every people do not buy, uh, do, every person does not buy a lottery ticket. So, for them this situation is better than this situation. So, risk taking behavior varies from people to people. Uh, similarly, uh, think about an insurance policy, 
what is happening in an insurance policy. It is just like the opposite of a lottery ticket. By uh, buying a lottery ticket, you are getting into an uncertain situation. Whereas in case of insurance policy, we are already in an uncertain situation. But by buying an insurance policy, we want to uh, get out of that uncertain situation. Uh, how? Here the payoffs are like uh, the following. Suppose one does not buy any insurance policy and suppose there is a burglary in his house. If there is a burglary in his house, he is losing some money. Suppose the amount of money that he loses because of the theft is suppose 1 lakh rupees. So, this is a loss. If he does not buy an insurance policy and uh, there is a theft. But there is a possibility that he does not buy the insurance policy and there is no theft, there is no burglary. In this case, he will be left with uh, no, no addition to his wealth or no subtraction to his wealth. So, his payoff is 0. So, this is an uncertain situation to begin with. There is a possibility the burglary might happen, there is a possibility that it might not happen. Now, why people then uh, buy an insurance policy? Well, if you buy an insurance policy, maybe you are going to pay an amount of money which is suppose 50,000. The total amount of premium that you are going to pay for this insurance. Now, if you buy the insurance policy, it is certain that you have to pay this premium. There is no uncertainty. But if you pay the premium, what is your gain? The gain is that if you have the burglary, you are not losing any money. This 1 lakh rupees that you, you, are, you uh, could have lost because of this, the theft, that will be compensated by the insurance company. So, here some people will like without going, uh, some people will not like to take the insurance policy, in which case they are preferring, preferring this kind of lottery, minus 1 lakh rupees and 0. But some people uh, are risk averse and they will like to buy this insurance policy and go for this certain outcome of minus 50,000 rupees. So, uh, and it may so happen that the person who is buying a lottery ticket, uh, who is getting into an uncertain situation, may be the same person who is also buying an insurance policy because it may differ, uh, his risk taking behavior may differ according to the amount of money involved. Uh, so, if the amount of money involved in the lottery is different from the amount of money involved in insurance policy, uh, he may uh, show risk aversion in some case and risk taking behavior and in some other case. Now, so this is more or less the, a, a digression from the mixed strategy in the Ash equilibrium discussion that we were having so far. To carry forward the discussion of uh, mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Uh, so, we can translate what we have discussed so far about the setting of uh, uncertainty and randomization of action by players in terms of uh, the language of game theory. So, in game theory what we need to specify is a set of players. How many players are involved that I have to specify here in case of mixed strategy in Ash equilibrium setting and the action set of each player and thirdly I have to uh, tell something about the preference pattern of the players. Now, in case of no mixed strategy in Ash equilibrium, preference was defined over the action profile. Uh, so, there were different action profiles of people, a player was supposed to tell which action profile he prefers over other pre action profiles and what is the order of preference. In case of mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, uh, what the person will be required to tell is that which <coughs> lotteries are preferred to him and which lotteries are less preferred to him. So, here the preference is not defined over action profiles, but it is defined over lotteries because 
the events are themselves uncertain and if the events are uncertain then there are probabilities attached to each event. So a person is uh, asked which distribution of these probabilities do you prefer more over other distribution of the probabilities uh, which are defined over a set of events. So preference regarding lotteries is represented by the expected value of payoff functions. And this expected value of payoff functions, this expected payoff functions are defined over action profiles. So, uh, it may happen that A can occur, B can occur, C can occur uh, and there are probabilities attached to each of this A and B and C, P1, P2, P3 and this uh, P1, P2, P3 might vary giving us different lotteries. Uh, I have to know for a particular player uh, whether how does he order these different lotteries uh, which are defined over this action profiles. Uh, a is coming from a particular action, action profile because if the players are taking some particular actions then a particular event is taking place that event is called A. If they are taking some other action the different action profile then B can occur which is another event. So, and uh, behind the occurrence of each of these events there are some uh, probabilities attached this distribution of the probabilities are called uh, is called lottery and what is required is that a person's preference uh, must be known uh, over this set of lotteries now once we have defined uh, the setting in terms of the language of game theory, uh, it becomes a little tricky uh, to compare this situation to the situation that we have been discussing so far in the sense that uh, so far in the uh, setting of strategic game, we said that the preference of the players was ordinal. this is something which we have assumed so far. By that we mean that uh, it does not matter about the absolute value of the numbers which set, which represent uh, uh, people's preference as long as the numbers relative value remains the same the person's preference remains the same that is what is known as ordinal preference. But here once I have defined uh, preference not over action profiles but over lotteries then we shall see that uh, this ordinality no longer does not remain so far. For example, let me give an example. Let us take the case of battle of sexes. So, this was the original setting. 2, 1, 1, 2. Uh, the point was that if the two players go to the same venue like they go to the boxing match together, uh, then both the players are better off compared to the situation where they go to different venues. But the benefit to the first player is more because he likes to watch the boxing match 
uh, more than his partner and vice versa. For the other player, it is the OO which is better. Now, ordinality will demand that this same game uh, can be represented by the following numbers. Three one zero 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 one three, because here uh, what I am doing is just raising the value of two to three, and by doing so, I am not uh, tinkering with the quality tape qualitative uh, difference between the numbers, which represent a particular player's preference. For example, player one still likes going to the boxing match with his partner better than going to the opening opera house with his partner which is better than uh, going to each of these venues separately. So, that that quality remains the same, but if these numbers have to represent uh, the preference of the players over certain outcomes whose expected value represent their preference over lotteries then there is a problem. For example, <coughs> let us take this first game first. So, this is the first game. This is the second game. In the first game, let us co consider one lottery. So, lottery 1. This lottery is the following that BB is occurring with probability suppose half and B O is occurring with probability half and another lottery considered the following is O O is occurring with probability 1. Now, so, these are the two lotteries I am considering in L 1 the first lottery uh, these two players are going to the boxing match with probability half and uh, the first any player goes to the boxing match with probability half uh, and his partner goes to the oper oper opera house and this event that he is going to the boxing match and his uh, partner goes to the opera house occurs with probability half uh, and this is for first player, player 1 and this is also I am just considering the preference of player 1. Now, if this is the case and uh, if I consider this first game, then this player will be indifferent between these two lotteries because with half probability they are going to the boxing match together from which he is getting 2. With half probability he is going to the box boxing match, his uh, wife goes to the opera house and that happens, uh, if that happens he gets 0 and this is equal to 1. And uh, if this lottery occurs that O O happens, then he is getting again 1 and I know these two are together equal, which means this person player 1 will be indifferent uh, between these two lotteries, this lottery and this lottery. Now, is player 1 indifferent in this game between these two, two lotteries? The answer is no. So, this is game 1, but what happens in game 2? In game 1, player 1 is indifferent between L1 and L2. In, in uh, game 2, 
if I consider lottery 1, what is the payoff of the player 1 from lottery 1? Here uh, BB is occurring with half probability, so 3 by 2 plus BO is occurring with half probability, so 0 divided by 2 which is 3 by 2 and what is his payoff from lottery 2? Uh, sorry, in lottery 2, 0, 0 occurs with certainty, so he is getting 1. So, in this case, L1 is preferred by player 1 to L2. So, uh, if I change the numbers, the absolute value changes, whereas qualitatively the numbers do not change, uh, then the game does not remain the same. Uh, then the preference, the Play, the preference of the players uh, are not represented, no longer is represented by this game as it was represented by this game. So, one has to be careful about the absolute value of numbers when one is considering a randomization by the players. So, ordinality uh, does not remain if we consider randomization. Now, this is well and good, but uh, let me do one exercise so that the idea becomes more clear. This is the exercise, construct a BOS game that is battle of sexes game in which a player is indifferent between going to her less preferred venue with the other player and a lottery wherein they go to different venues with probability half and she goes to her favorite venue with the other player with probability half. So, this is the first part and then there is this other part. Uh, let us to solve this problem, let us suppose the payoff to a player. if uh, the players go to different venues is equal to 0 and payoff to a player is 2 if they go to the same venue which is the preferred venue for the player. Okay. So, if this is assumed then we have a structure to the game. What we know is that if they go to different venues, the payoffs are 0, 0. Uh, if they go to the same venue and that venue is the preferred venue of that player, the player is getting 2. So, this is true and this is also true. What we need to know is this value x x is the payoff to a player when they go to the same venue, but that venue is not preferred by that player. Now, <coughs> to find out x, what, what is the hint that is given, what is the clue that is given in the question? The clue is that uh, going to her less preferred concert in the company of the other player. So, if you go to the concert which is not preferred to you, you get x. This is indifferent, the person is indifferent to this outcome with the lottery in which with probability half, she and the other player go to different concert. If they go to different concerts, they, she gets 0. And with half probability, uh, they go to her more preferred concert. If they go to her more preferred concert, she gets 2. So, this is the equation that needs to be solved. 
and obviously from this we get that x is equal to 1. So, the game is uh, just the standard battle of sexes game that we have been seeing from the beginning itself. So, this is the game 2 1 0 0 0 0 1 2. There is another part to this question. Uh, so, we retain that assumption that this is 2, this is x. Okay. Here the clue is the following. Do the same in the case that each player is indifferent between going to her less preferred com concert in the company of the other player. So, this is x. He is indifferent between this event and the lottery in which with probability 3 fourth she and the other player go to different concerts. So, 0 and with probability 1 fourth they go to her more preferred concert. If they, they go to her more preferred concert, uh, the player is getting 2. So, this is uh, half, right. So, the game is now a little bit changed in the sense that x is now half, not 1. So, this is the game that we were supposed to find out. Uh, now, this was the discussion about the basics of the mixed strategy uh, equilibrium analysis. Now, let us try to define what is known as the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium because that is the thing that we are trying to get at. So, let us to do that, let us, let us first define what is a mixed strategy. Mixed strategy is defined for each player for each player i mix strategy is a probability distribution over her set of actions. So, it is uh, denoted by, I will go, go, I am going to denote it by alpha i. So, alpha i is the mixed strategy of player i, it is nothing but a probability distribution over her action set. So, if her action set is a i, alpha i tells me what are the values of probabilities uh, that are going to be attached to each element of this capital a i. So, suppose small a i belongs to capital A i, then alpha i should tell me what is the value of probability attached to this small a i and this will be represented by alpha i a i. And uh, obviously, since the summation of the probabilities must add up to 1, it should happen that this should be equal to 1. Uh, if I take all the actions, then the probability is attached to all these actions, they must sum up to 1. <coughs> uh, notice that uh, this is a probability distribution. Now, if I degenerate this probability distribution into a distribution where only one action, let us call it A1 or say I is equal to 1 and the player has more than one action in his action set, then this, uh, this becomes what is known as PO strategy. Here there is no randomization, he is saying that I am going to take this action AI for certainty. So, PO strategy is something that we have seen before where player were, players were taking a particular action, each player was taking a particular action and there was no randomization. 
Uh, so that was a special case of this general case where randomization is allowed. Now since we have defined uh, what is known as, as mixed strategy of a player, let us now look at the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. Uh, well, uh, to tell you the before I tell you the idea of mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, uh, let me begin by saying that in mixed strategy Nash equilibrium, the idea is more or less similar to the idea of Nash equilibrium that we have seen before. <coughs> in the previous case, there was uh, there were many action profiles. A particular action profile A star uh, was Nash equilibrium or was a Nash equilibrium. If <coughs> given the actions taken by other players in that action profile, uh, action taken by player i which is suppose a i star uh, is the best possible action that i can take. And this happens for each player and we call uh, that a star the action profile as the Nash equilibrium. Here players are not taking actions as such, players are deciding on the mixed strategies that they can take and these mixed strategies are defined over the set of actions. So here the crucial thing is not A star but what is known as a mixed strategy profile. instead of an action profile. So we shall call it as alpha. Alpha is collection of different mixed strategies adopted by, by different players. So player 1 has this mixed strategy alpha 1, player 2 has the mixed strategy alpha 2 dot dot dot, player n has the mixed strategy alpha n. Alpha is the collection of different mixed strategies and it is called a mixed strategy profile. <coughs> now we shall call a particular mixed strategy profile alpha star is a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium if and only if for each player i u i alpha star this for every mix strategy alpha i of player i and here capital u i alpha is the expected value of the mixed strategy. alpha to player i. <coughs> uh, so let me go just take you through the definition once more. Uh, alpha star is a particular mixed strategy profile. So it is a collection of different mixed strategies. It is called a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium if and only if the payoff to 
each player from alpha star is never less than the payoff to that player if he takes some other mix strategy uh, which is there which he can take uh, which is a feasible mix strategy and this happens for each player. Uh, this u i star capital u i star is the expected value of the payoffs uh, to any player for example, here u i. So, it is the expected value of the payoff to player i from the mix strategy profile alpha. Uh, so, what is the story is the following that behind alpha I know that there is these all these mix strategies. Now, if I know this mix strategies of different players which is basically which are basically the probabilities that probability distributions uh, and uh, in each probability distribution each player is saying a player is saying that what are the actions uh, what are the probabilities with which he is going to play his actions. Now, any particular event will come will happen when the players will take a certain kind of actions. For example, Suppose this is a 1 and a 2, this is b 1 and b 2, this is player 2, this is player 1. This event a 1 and b 1 happens if player 1 takes this action and player 2 takes this action. So, what is the probability of happening of this event? It will be given by suppose this is p, this is q, then the probability that this event happens a 1 b 1 happens. Uh, is p multiplied by q. <coughs> so, this this is just an illustration to, uh, to demonstrate the fact that to for, for every event uh, I have to know what are the probabilities that players are attaching to the actions which are responsible for that event. Uh, so, from and this event if this happens then player 1 will get some payoff out of it let us call it pi 1. And so, the payoff to player 1 will be pi 1 multiplied by p q. Similarly, here there will be some pay, payoff to player 1 and behind the, that payoff there is this event and behind this event there are these probabilities. So, p multiplied by 1 minus q multiplied by suppose pi 2. So, that is again has to be taken into account. Now, by adding such terms what we are going to get is this. That is why I have written that uh, u i alpha is the expected value of the payoffs which can of the mix strategy alpha which player 1 is getting. So, if I look at alpha the mix strategy profile. So, this mix strategy profile if I look at the mixed strategy profile alpha, uh, I can figure out what are the probabilities which are responsible or which are behind a particular event. And so, for e each event I can calculate the probability of that event and if I do that I can find out the expected value of the payoff to player 1 uh, to pl each player. <coughs> And if I do that, uh, I, I can get these numbers, I can compare these numbers and if this is satisfied for each player, then this alpha star is going to be known as the mixed strategy in Nash equilibrium. So, uh, I shall stop here in this lecture. Uh, before we finish what we have discussed in this lecture, we have talked about uh, the expected utility theory and we said that by applying the rule of expected utility theory we can uh, get an idea about the risk aversion or uh, risk loving nature of a person by looking at uh, his or her utility function, how the utility function is shaped. And uh, then we talked about uh, the fact that uh, in mixed strategy Nash equilibrium where players are randomizing between actions, we no longer have ordinality of preference. 
And thirdly, we defined what is known as a mixed strategy and we have defined what is known as a mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. In the next lecture, we shall talk about how to find out mixed strategy Nash equilibria in different kinds of games. Thank you. Explain what is meant by von Neumann Morgenstern preference. Okay, in von Neumann Morgenstern preference, what is important is that we are dealing with uncertain situations. So, suppose three outcomes x, y, z can occur with probabilities P1, P2, P3, where P1 plus P2 plus P3 is equal to 1. Now, for a player, <coughs> if uh, she gets the following payoff from the above lottery. This is a lottery that three outcomes are occurring with uh, each with some probability. This is called a lottery. Now, what is the payoff of the player from this lottery? Remember, it is not the case that any particular outcome is occurring. So, we cannot talk about outcome uh, and the related payoff to that. What we can say is that what is the payoff the player is getting uh, from the lottery itself, not from each outcome. Okay. Uh, for a player, if she gets the following payoff from the above lottery given by u 1 and we can write it as the following so uh, before the colon the outcomes are there and after the column the probabilities the real respective probabilities are there and if this is represented by this then the preference is called preference von Neumann Morgenstern preference which means that the payoff from the lottery itself is the expected value of the payoffs from individual outcomes. If that can be said to be occurring, then we can say that the preference is uh, von Neumann Morgenstern preference. In strategic games with von Neumann Morgenstern preference, what are the three key, key components? Do the absolute value of the numbers representing the, the players preferences matter unlike ordinal preference? So, the three components one like before the set of players, two or say B for each player set of actions and C for each player preference regarding
for each player we have to specify the preference and this is specified by the following that the preference regarding lottery is over action profiles that may be represented by expected value of payoff functions over action profiles. And the last point is that do the numbers matter? Yes, the absolute value of uh, payoff numbers matter. Thank you.